Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Kirsten. We have blown through the Old Testament and we are coming into the New. So obviously we're going to start at the Gospels, the beginning of the New Testament. So the New Testament, the chronicles and teaching of Jesus and his life. Um, and most people would think, Kirsten, you've already taught me how to read historical narrative. Isn't this just a retelling of Christ's life? No. But it's similar. Um, so reading the Gospels, we're probably a little too comfy cozy with the New Testament. That's what we like to read. That's what we're taught on a lot. Um, you know, it's it's where most of our teaching comes from. Um, so we're not kind of as wary as we should be about it. Um, so what do we need to look out for when we're reading the Gospels? Well, first off, we need to do two things. Think Vertically and horizontally. Kirsten, what does that mean? Let's start with horizontally. Thinking horizontally when reading the Gospels is recognizing that there are four of them, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If God wanted us to have one Gospel, he would have just given us one. Instead, we're blessed with four. Now, three of the Gospels are remarkably similar and they are called the Synoptic Gospels and are the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is believed that Mark was written first and Matthew and Luke were written based off of Mark. Um, even down to like the exact same sentence and word use, um, which is really hard to do in Greek. Um, so those three are really similar. John kind of hangs out by himself. Um, so it's believed that was written independently and he had other sources. So we need to remember that these gospels, um, were not written by Christ, right? They probably would have looked similar to the prophetic books if Jesus had written them, but he didn't. Um, so the first three were written really similarly. John probably written separate. That means that there are four different authors for the four different gospels. So when we're thinking horizontally, we're thinking about all four books at the same time. This uh, allows us to point out similarities and differences. There's a lot of crossover between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, right? So we can read parables and Jesus's teachings in all three of those gospels, but they might be presented a slightly different way, which can give us different insights into what Christ is trying to say. John presents a lot of different topics, but we should still be reading all when we're reading one gospel in light of all the other ones. That is thinking horizontally. Thinking vertically is your favorite thing to do when reading the Bible, and that's thinking about our context. Now, we're not just thinking about the historical context here, which would be the historical context of Christ, which would mean we would need to recognize um, all that we've learned in the Old Testament about Judaism and what that culture would have looked like, we need to also recognize the historical context of Judaism, you know, with the big separation between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, we need to know the historical context of things like King Herod and Pontius Pilate and how the Roman Empire came to be and all that was going on socially and politically, right? That's one historical context that we need to be thinking about. But we also need to be thinking about another historical context with the Gospels, and that's the context of the authors. Um, so the Gospels were written decades after Christ had already died. So things have happened, right? Um, Christians are already being persecuted. There's um, And the historical context of who the authors are is an important part. Take Matthew, for example. Um, we need to recognize that Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew was addressing Jewish Christians. Um, and he was writing in a certain um, place to a certain group of people. So we have these two um, historical contexts that we need to think about. Um, so that's the main point of horizontally and vertically, right? All four of the Gospels is one story. And we need to be thinking about the historical context of Christ and of the authors. So there's already a lot going on with the Gospels. There's a lot to take in 
And if we don't put time into studying them with outside resources, it's easy for us to kind of lose what's going on in the Gospels. Um, and we can misinterpret things like all the farming parables and all of that. And we're going to talk about how to read, um, you know, parables and all of that because um, they're a special kind of thing. Keep in mind, Jesus was a Jew. So this means Jesus was good at reading poetry and using things like hyperbole and storytelling and everything that we learned about in the Old Testament, Jesus would have been good at doing. So sometimes when you, you know, Jesus would have been really good at exaggerating and using all those communication devices we've already learned about. Now, if that's not enough for you, on top of all of that, we need to be thinking about the meta narrative when we're reading the Gospels, right? Christ is kind of the central point to that redemptive narrative. He plays a really big part in the overall history of the Bible. So we obviously need to take that into account. Now, one of the things that we really need to pay attention to when we're reading the Gospels is the idea of kingdom. What is kingdom? What is Christ talking about when he talks about it in the Gospels? What about when we're praying the Lord's prayer? prayer right? May your kingdom come and be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? If we don't understand kingdom, we're missing a really, really big part. In order to understand kingdom, we have to jump back to Judaism. Um, so Jews had the idea that the big picture of God's redemptive history was broken into three parts. God creates the world, the world is broken and we make it fall, um, and Satan enters the picture and we live in a period like we are now where sin is in the, in the picture and things aren't how they're supposed to be. But Christ comes in, no, Christ doesn't come, the Messiah, um, in like a big epic battle. Um, and they had ideas about what this would look like. Craig addressed this really well in his um, Palm Sunday sermon. Um, they thought it would be a political or a war leader um, that they would take over and become this like political pillar. Um, and that's how the Jews viewed the whole timeline. Now, we know that um, there was creation, fall, we live in this time of brokenness, so there's sin and Satan and all the bad things are happening, but then Christ comes and Christ um, completes the old covenant, brings in the new, which is based on a relationship with Christ and we don't have to do actions anymore to be saved. We have salvation, we have eternal life. But we don't have everything yet. And this is the idea called the already but not yet narrative. So we have Christ. We have all the good stuff. But we don't have all of it. Right? We don't have everything. And we don't have this because we have the book of Revelation which outlines everything that is to come. So we have to recognize this tension when we're reading the New Testament that Christ has completely changed the narrative, right? In, in a lot more ways than one. So if we don't recognize that, even on a basic level, then we don't understand why the Jewish leaders get so ticked off, right? Because one, they think he's pretending to be the Messiah and he's doing a bad job at it. Um, and that's kind of why they get so mad. Two, if we don't understand that, a lot of what the Gospels are talking about um, doesn't make sense. Um, from a theological standpoint, a lot of things don't make sense. Um, so we need to kind of play with this tension as we're reading the New Testament. And remember that we have a lot of parts of, you know, the final um, comings and new creation, but not yet. So it's really important when we're reading the Gospels in the, um, in the New Testament that we're thinking about the big picture Right? So we have the idea of meta narrative and redemptive history in the back of our minds, especially when we get to the epistles, because a lot of what Paul talks about is in relationship to this idea of kingdom. It's really a central theme in the New Testament. So, how we read the Gospels, right? Horizontal, we're thinking about them as four books. 
um, but we're reading them side by side. We're thinking vertically, we're always thinking historical context, but we have the context of Christ and the context of the authors. Um, and we need to be thinking about this idea of kingdom. Um, so the Gospels have a lot going on, a little deceptive, um, but they contain a lot of really good material. I always recommend the Gospel of Mark and doing a fun practice and sitting down and reading it um, start to finish in one sitting, right? Mark is meant to be short. The theme of Mark is discipleship, so there's a lot that you can get out of it. Um, and go read some historical context on the Gospels. Um, there's a lot of fun books out there like Jesus Through Middle Eastern Eyes that gives us some more context on what is going on in these books. That's all we have time for today. It's a nice short episode today. And I will see you next time when we talk about the book of Acts. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to it.